Taylor, 214 Howard Road. Yes, sir. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your address. I apologize. 21413 Howard Road. Thank I'm going to read this. Um, just so I can make sure that, you know, it, it flows a little bit. Um, I've been a people resident for over 20 years. My kids are right here. I have two doctors, one with double masters, finance. Um, and here's where I started. I was perplexed for a while as to why the Beach with Excellence model was being gutted and had accelerated over the past few years. What's changed? Years and decades prior, students made friends based on personalities, similarities, differences, and interests in academic sports, music, clubs, associations, etc. They studied together, carpooled together, went on trips together, went, on, went to each other's houses together, uh, went out to eat together, planned school activities together. The athletes, cheerleaders, and band members rode together on school buses to games all over Northeast Ohio together. They laughed and cried when I lose together. Band members went to band camp together. They ran bake sales together. Parents took turns running the concession stands during games together. Parents sat together at games and cheered on each other's, uh, on the team members. They took pictures at homecoming, prom, and other events and went to restaurants and home parties after together. They congratulated each other when they were receiving their acceptance letters to the <coughs> colleges and universities that they applied to and consoled each other when they didn't get into the school of their choice. They were never surprised when Beachwood school system was either in first, second, or third place consistently year after year in Northeast Ohio or tops within the state of Ohio for academic achievement for vocational and college prep. There was a high percentage of students who took the honors and AP classes and graduated from high school with college credits already under their belt. The students were polite and respectful to adults and law enforcement. The, administrative, the administration, teachers and staff were vested in everyone's success. Beachwood excellence and Beachwood pride. There was no extra time for any other focus. There were true friendships. In essence, they learned about and celebrated their similarities and differences. Their focus was not on race nor gender. Students still stay in touch with each other, knowing about each other's successful careers, marriage, kids, etc. It was beautiful. It was Beachwood schools. It was unique. Contrast it with today's school system, superintendent, school board, school administration, the decision makers. Let's start with the website, beachwoodschools.org. Here is the, you have the curriculum page, you have two links, the curriculum page and the educational equity page. The website has a menu item for uh, the, the website has a menu item for curriculum that doesn't mention anything about curriculum. Why? Because if a lot more of the residents knew about the mess that you've made of the school system via the curriculum and policy, you all would probably lose your position in the in the district. Many school districts in Ohio are now hiding their curriculum from its residents because they're teaching students to become bigots toward their peers, adults, and law enforcement. Many school districts within, the, within this congressional district are on board with advocating, funding, and teaching young students the how-to about changing their gender, child pornography, and pedophilia, and where to find those websites, what sex toys to purchase, and how to use that which is purchased. Parents are not being told that their child is being taught that at the school, and the teachers and librarians are being exempted from criminal prosecution. Regarding the educational equity piece, it appears that the superintendent and you as school board members grew up uh, so white that you don't even know the damage that your decisions have caused previous current and future generations of Beachwood students whose parents just wanted them to qualify to attend great universities. Instead, you convince yourselves that blacks are oppressed and that it is your job to stop the oppression. How have, not, have you now looked 
as a result to realize what you did was immoral and had the opposite effect? Within Beachwood schools, black kids are turning against white people of all ages, and white kids are hating their parents and their success and their heritage and calling them racist only because you don't understand the black race. You attempted to fix something that, for all intents and purposes, years ago, was in reality not even broken. You just convinced yourself that it was broken. It was never your job. You got out of your lane. Your job was to provide students with the environment to be well-rounded and educationally successful. Now, the residents with kids who did find out about your deviant curriculum, they pulled their kids out as fast as they could. More are, many more are withdrawing their kids because the school system has lost control of the classroom environment. In the document, in the document for critical race theory, your stated goal is to make children advocates, I mean activists, in their own home. What does that mean? Why are you creating an uh, trying to create an adversarial relationship, relationship between parents and child when that is the relationship that needs to be strengthened? This ch school parent relationship and you intrinsically, intrinsically just advocating the kids to just be adversarial to their parents is nuts. This is nuts. And one of the things, let me tell you something. I'm a professional as well. I grew up in corporate America. I've met people like you all every day. You all don't know nothing about black people, but you, you have to still you think you can make rules for black people. The black kids in Beachwood schools, when they were growing up all these decades until you all came along, they didn't look at race or gender. Very successful black people. Very successful. But what did you do? You just decided instead of looking at Beachwood data, you decided to put us lumped in with George Floyd and everybody else that got killed. Then it had nothing to do with Beachwood. Nothing. So what do you do? You put in stuff like critical race theory and all this other garbage that, first of all, is none of your business. Well, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but just in the in fairness, I, I stopped you at three minutes and you've been, you have let you go a little bit longer, 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 longer. Let her finish. Let her finish. This is, come on now. How many black folks do you have in the You have to ask black people how to handle, it was nothing for you all to do here. Now you have kids not liking their own parents. You have black kids that are now racist against their peers. We never saw that. You all went down a road because of what you see nationally that had nothing to do with Beachwood. Now you're teaching, and now you got school systems in this congressional district telling them how to have anal sex, and this is what your self sex, sex education. Oh, every oh, they're teaching. The, the gender, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to cut you off. The gender unicorn is in shaker. Is in all again, the cities. Again, this isn't the this isn't the back and forth. But I think yeah. I take extreme exception to almost everything that you said because because Why your your you premise is wrong. Why this this administration wrong? and this board is is committed to to equity mm -hmm. for every student in this district. You can shake your heads and go out there. You're committed to What you read in a book. Thank you. What you read in a book. Thank you. Next. Please. 
Oh, actually, before I start, Dr. Hardis, the, um, I pulled up that policy number. It's 2240, um, and the sentence, referring back to my earlier comment, oh, should I say my name and address again? Not yet. No, sir. So, uh, referring back to my earlier comments, it's policy 2240 regarding controversial issues. The sentence that appears that is being uh, struck in, stricken from the record is, uh, or stricken from the policy is, in the discussion of any issue, a teacher may express a personal opinion, but shall identify it as such, and must not express such an, an opinion for the purpose of persuading students to his or her point of view. That sentence, I think, is critical to education, and it appears that Beachwood schools are striking that from policy for teachers. I'll take a look at it. Thank you for Thank referring to it. Thank you. So, uh, my name is Jonathan Broadbent, 3362 Belvoir. As I mentioned earlier, I did not plan on speaking today, but I guess due to my position in the community and being known as a somewhat vocal uh, person, uh, dependable, and, uh, I don't know, trustworthy, what have you, um, some people have approached me feeling comfortable speaking to me and asking me to speak on their behalf because they fear retribution if they speak for themselves. That's an unfortunate position, I think, for all of us. Um, I would suggest that as a school board, you should want to have teachers and staff and students and parents who are comfortable approaching you with any issue. As it stands, you do not. I have a great number. I was su very surprised by the volume of people who communicated with me over the past week pursuant to the upcoming um, event on 311. Uh, among them, this is a side note, I don't know if anybody knows this, it probably does not have any relevance, but it is operating under the radar for most folks throughout the city of Beachwood you know how people can gravitate to strange and interesting things. The number 311 is used to signify the KKK. Mm -hmm. the, the, not, the letter K is the 11th number. So KKK members use that apparently to identify themselves and show commiseration and appreciation for white supremacy and KKK. That's come to my attention, and it's leading to some new element of fear and anxiety about the program. Separate from that, and that's just, it's probably incidental and, and probably innocuous, but um, we've got all sorts of concern about this thing. Um, a great number of people, uh, good, bad, ugly, or broken, people know that they can rely on my integrity. Uh, my involvement in the city of Beachwood leadership and close proximity to education and community make people feel comfortable talking to me. That's my takeaway from the last week. Over the last several days, I've heard from teachers, faculty, staff, parents, grandparents, ta pay taxpayers, and people of all stripes, colors, backgrounds, white, black, wealthy, and otherwise, and there is fear and anger. Teachers would like to teach, but feel physically and financially threatened into following this doctrine associated with the comments uh, this woman made earlier, um, expressing concern about uh, their safety and what's being advocated for. You should know this as a school board. You have staff who are very uncomfortable and very displeased with the trajectory of this school district uh, and feel unsafe voicing their opinions. This all revolves around race. Uh, the parents are afraid for their kids and students, and I understand students are very afraid to speak up for fear of reprisal. That can take many forms. Um, there are, there's increased and drastically heightened racial tension that I've been made aware of. I've been told the number of circumstances that are significant and jaw-dropping here in Beachwood. It's heartbreaking. Um, I'm here to tell you that what you're doing 
he is in the eyes of many in the community not working and moving further in that direction will break things further i suggest that this upcoming event on 311 is problematic at best i suggest that in my opinion it's outside of your lane it's outside of the purview of a school board to to broach into moral and social character and to advocate for uh, developing activists within the community it is certainly within the purview of the school district to formulate events around important civic matters such as race relations however it's been my understanding that that dialogue has been severely one-sided mm -hmm. for instance the uh, critical race theory has a counterpoint to it. And we in the city of Cleveland have probably the single best resource in the country when it comes to, um, to race relations. Uh, uh, Peter Curzonow, I've heard him speak a bunch of times. He's a lawyer downtown Cleveland with Banish. He is the longest standing member of the US Council on Civil Rights. And he is diametrically strongly opposed to what you are doing this Thursday. He and many people like him will speak vocally in public against the doctrine that you are bringing to, to Beachwood schools on 311. Um, there is a counter to that, which is showing tremendous success. And that is the 1776 Unity Project brought to us by a vast array of very successful black intellectuals, business leaders, military leaders, all of the, uh, some of the greatest of the great have gotten together and said, we don't agree with the 17, the 1619 critical race theory, that ball of wax. Let's do something that's more, that, that's more unifying. I would encourage you to consider that if you pursue this course, at least please allow the other conversation to also take place within the city of Beachwood schools. Thank you. Hello, <clears throat> excuse me. Hello, my name is Wayne Dancy, D-A-N-C-I-E. I'm at 1661 Warrensville Center Road. I am not a uh, Beachwood resident, I'm South Euclid. In August of 1970, I was forced to uh, integrate Murray Hill. For those of you from Cleveland, you know Murray Hill was a very hostile environment yes. for anyone other than native uh, or first or second generation Italians. I spent three years at Murray Hill, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I'm the oldest of six. All, all six of us attended Murray Hill, five or six graduated from college. I'm born to a single mother that raised in Cleveland. We never had discussions about race. We succeeded. My entire family never talking about race. I have a, uh, there are two CPAs, there's an attorney in our family, there's a judge, business owner. I am so sick of talking about race. Thank you. Why are you introducing to our kids? from Kinston High School. It was not as racially balanced as Beachwood. It was only about nine, ten percent minority students at all. They never had a problem with race. I've asked them. They have told me they've had more problems as an adult in this culture these last five to ten years than they ever had as a student. We live on the west side we lived next to people that were self-proclaimed white races, never had a problem with them. I don't get what's going on. This is madness. It's madness. What are you teaching the kids? This is the communist cultural revolution of the late 60s and early 70s, mm -hmm. where you turn the youth, which is against the fifth, uh, which is against the fifth uh, commandment, against their parents. Yeah, right. What is right, this right. stuff? We are Americans. We want to be Americans. We want to raise our kids to achieve. Merit is what caused us to achieve. Yeah. We go out, we, we, we battle. 
And when I mean battle, I don't mean physical battle. We just do our best. We train our kids to do their best. That's what matters most. Sir, I don't agree with you on not being race conscious. Everybody knows. It can be color the difference. That's no big deal. The key is, the young lady said, it, it does not matter. A person's color only matters to the person that it matters. It doesn't matter to me. I have friends from every walk of life. Thank you. I mean, we share bedrooms together. Yeah. I can't even tell you all the experiences. Our kids the same. Mm -hmm. When Betsy called and asked me what I thought of this, I was horrified. Now I look at my grandson, who's four years old, and I'm very concerned. Mm -hmm. If he's going to be taught this stuff, we'll pull him out of school for sure. Mm -hmm. And we will not subject our kids to this kind of stuff. You're crippling black kids because you're telling them there's a problem with you. Yep. Then you're crippling white kids because you're telling them there's a problem with you. Yep. Then you're crippling black kids. <laughs> so, as a concerned parent, grandparent now, and I think that we as a country are way off track. Martin Luther King, everybody likes to vote him, but he said the content uh, of a man's character mattered most. Not the color of his skin. Mm. I went through that. I have a dream to preach. I have done everything you talked about. We've been to, uh, what is that place in Georgia? Mountain or whatever. Stone, Stone Mountain in Georgia. Our kids have been judged by their peers based on who they are. This, this, this whole critical theory, philosophy, and that race is only one of the legs, is very deconstructive to what made America. Equity is outcome. It's actually right. You can't it's judge right. outcome. Why? Because every individual has unique, God-given talents and abilities. So how are you going to come up with an outcome? We want you to police the opportunities that our kids have. Make sure that they have the same opportunities to learn. And with that, we succeed. All right. so Broadbent. Can you hear me all right? My address is 3362 Belvoir Boulevard. Um, like my husband Jonathan, I was not planning to speak tonight, but I was asked to speak by many, many people. I was floored, frankly, by how many people called, emailed, texted, whatever, for both of us saying, I can't speak about this because my kids will feel the brunt of it. I can't speak about this because my friends will turn their backs on me. I can't speak about this because if I show that I don't fully agree with critical race theory and the seminars that come with it and the need for activism on the part of my kids, if I show that I don't agree with that, I'm going to be called a racist. So all the people who talk to us and ask us to come here, it is not a few people, it's a lot of people. It's parents of kids in the high school, in the middle school, in Hilltop, in Brighton, in the preschool. People who have babies who plan to one day attend Beachwood schools are scared about this. They're upset about this. Now, it's totally possible that maybe we've completely misread the point of the seminar. But based on the language that was sent out in that email, parents are very, very worried that this is going to add to the tensions that they're seeing, tensions that many of them feel are being used to push one political viewpoint. Now, people get upset when people say, Oh, this is a political solution to race. And they say, how, how dare you say that racism is political? It's not what these families are saying to me. They're saying that these particular solutions that you seem to be pushing in many different avenues are very political, and they're not the only way to look at it. Parents say to me, Tiff, I'm so scared. Because once I say that I don't want my kids hearing exactly what's in this presentation, or that I want to know what's in it ahead of time before I agree, people are going to think that either I'm a racist, or some people are going to say, well, you're not a racist, but you're enabling racism by, you know, by not wanting to hear this. Or maybe you're not as bad as the enablers, but, you know, you, you're at least, um, you're a denier. You know, you're not aware that it's there. You just can't be bothered to care. And that's not true. So many people in Beachwood care about this, and they want it to be addressed. And they want their kids to feel comfortable being part of a solution. 
but this is not the only solution that's out there. Now, the way this email was worded, maybe that's the problem here, is that the way it was worded it gives people the impression that it is part of the critical race theory philosophy. Part of that philosophy says that you must be an activist, and if you are not an activist, you are an enemy. Parents are very worried about this because many of them care deeply about a lot of these issues, and so do their kids. But they can't even question it. Kids in the middle school, kids in the high school, try to bring things up with their teachers, and they're shouted down. Teachers call us in tears. They're worried about this. They don't like what they're being pushed to teach because it's very one-sided, and it leaves no room for anyone to explore or discuss. Teachers, I'm sorry, parents that contacted us want, above all, for this seminar not to be mandatory. They want the chance to look at it, not just a paragraph description, but to actually see it. So if you have footage from the staffer, that's similar to what the kids will hear, maybe they can look at that, or some other materials that you might have, but they want to opt into it. They want to say, okay, here's this thing that's outside the curriculum, the school district thinks this is important, let me evaluate this and see if I want my child to participate. They should have that right. Above all the two things that they wanted me to make sure to make clear to you. Number one, I already said, which is that not agreeing with this doesn't mean they're racists. And that's the thing they really don't want to be accused of, above all else. Number two is that sitting in those seats does not give you the right to indoctrinate other people's children. Sitting in those seats does not give you the right to tell other people's children that they have to be activists for this particular issue. That's a family decision. Information about different viewpoints is great. Information about, here's what a lot of people in the country believe right now, or here's what a lot of people think is a solution. That's fine, talk about it, bring it up. Show them other viewpoints to them, and let the, let the parents be the guide in what they choose to do. Thank you very much. Hi guys, Valerie Charms Mason, uh, 23605 East Silsby. Um, I didn't plan on speaking tonight, except I have just a couple things. First of all, I would like to be in attendance if my child is mandated uh, to go to this assembly. I would like to attend in person and watch because I want to be sure that I know exactly what they're being told so that I can go home and do damage control. I, as a citizen of this city, I was raised in Shaker Heights, Ohio. I've talked to you guys over the past year about my concerns with escalating racism. As a Jewish woman, I was taught from the very beginning that when you start singling people out, there's a problem. There was a right stop fire, and that is what's going on here. I am upset that my children are being told to feel guilty about being white, to start looking at people the way they look before they're supposed to do anything else. What happened to meritocracy? What happened to do your best work be kind. I must tell my kids that every day. Do one thing. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Do you know before any of this started, one of my kids came home and said, you know, I gotta tell you, I'm kinda sick of all this race stuff. You know, all they do is talk about how we're all so different. He goes, we're really not that different. Can't we just, like, you know what I mean? The heat brought this up before any of this stuff happened. You know, I, I was a student teaching about race relations in college. I have dated men of many different, uh, you know, races and class. I think what this gentleman was trying to say, and I wouldn't, wouldn't dream of uh, correcting it, it's not that we don't see color. That is, a, that is a thing that irritates. We see color. Everybody's a different color in here. The good news is it's color not is relevant. Color is beautiful. It's not relevant. We are taught to uh, assess people on their merits. Who are they? Are they kind? Are they nice? Do we find common ground or do we walk away? We don't look at somebody and judge them before they've even started. I am horrified. I literally was like, I think I need blood pressure medication and I don't have high blood pressure. But um, before my kids are going to this assembly, either there's going to be a pause and you guys are going to step back for a minute and let the parents reevaluate, or I will be happy to attend in person on behalf of all the parents that are concerned with coming in here and I would be glad to write up my report. Uh, and one last thing. I asked about this months ago, and I'm asking again. This community has stopped talking to each other. We started standing on little pedestals and telling everybody else who they are and what they're supposed to be doing, and I don't like it. 
I don't like it for my kids. I don't like it from the school board. I don't like it from anybody. I recommend, as soon as the weather starts getting nice, late April, maybe early May, let's have a community discussion. Let's invite the families to come and talk to each other. I said, you know, how silly would it be if we all met on the Beachwood football field with our masks on, and every 10 seconds we had to walk up to somebody else and say, hi, I'm a conservative and uh, something else about me. Great to meet you. And everybody starts laughing. And then you walk up to them, hi, I'm such and such. I mean, this is like kindergarten. I don't know what happened to us. We stopped talking to each other. We stopped being concerned about celebrating each person's individuality yes. and all that. We're, we're stuck on who looks like what. Mm. And I'm, I'm, my kids will not be mandated to go to anything that I don't know what it's about as it relates to race, because it's very important to me.